God bless and thank you for joining us today. We are so glad that you can join with in with us today. You know, I, this is Reflections of Grace Outreach Ministries, and we are so thankful that you all have taken the time out of your, your busy schedule, whether you're on your way traveling in traffic or at home and just relaxing with the family, or even if you're still in quarantine, we want to say thank you and God bless you for joining in with us on today's discussion. Today's discussion, we're gonna be talking about living up to your spiritual potential. And what goes so great about that subject is so many things can be unpacked about what our spiritual potentials are. So in this aspect, we're talking about growing as a servant leader in Christ. And um, I think that it's very, uh, it's a great topic to talk about spiritual wise and a great topic to talk about just as uh, individual believers in Christ, because we have to um, understand what our potential, our sp spiritual potential is in Christ Jesus as we move forward in Christ. So, um, Without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and open up with a word of prayer because it's always important to open with a word of prayer when we're discussing the Bible and topics because I believe that that ushers in the, the blessings of God when we begin to talk and we begin to discuss and I pray that others will join in as well. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for all your blessings and your grace. We thank you, Lord, that you have been so good to us. We thank you that you have allowed us one more day on this earth to say thank you. We thank you, Lord, that you have provided for us and kept us through the darkest times of our lives. And we thank you that, that no harm have befalled upon us. We thank you, Lord, and we, we give you honor, glory, and praise. Lord, we ask you to bless the discussion today that it may edify those that are listening. We ask you, Heavenly Father, to expand your word into their minds and in their hearts so that they can understand and grow as well. We thank you and we bless your name. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 So we're going to start today. And I just thank God for, for everything. I thank God for life, you know, and <clears throat> our subject is living um, living up to your spiritual potential. And you know, when God created us, he made us, each of us, with strengths and talents that were meant to worship and glorify him. Each of us are wonderfully and fearfully made, yet we have been told or made to experience things in our life that has caused us to submit to self-doubt, low self-esteem, and premeditated lies by Satan. Some, do not, some of us do not even believe that Satan or demonic influences are real. However, as we look at the current state of the world and correlate that with biblical texts, we can find prophetic messages that foretell us of the days and times we were currently facing. We are currently facing today, the potential of mankind has consistently shown that we need hope. Hope brings peace and joy in our lives to be thankful and willing to show love to others. Also, as we turn the corner on the pandemic, we must remember the abnormal struggles and deaths that we've recently endured and try to live up to our spiritual potential. You see, we can work and strive to obtain money. We can work for wealth and, and love because we, because we have that as the strongest desire. And that is our strongest desire to do well. But let's consider our spiritual lives or our spirituality. We should ask ourselves the question, have we lived up to our spiritual potential? Or are we more focused on the here and now? 
and quote unquote the hope. <laughs> and the fact that there is no afterlife. The Bible has provided us with the means to an end, meaning in the Bible, some passages and stories talk about eternity and living our lives to the fullness of our creator. God has provided us with the template of reconciliation and peace. All we have to do is read, listen to the read and listen to the Holy Spirit and believe that Jesus is the son of God. The Bible tells us that we will have peace and comfort in our obedience to the teachings of Jesus. However, our spiritual potential is created as created beings has been set aside for the earthly desires and prideful trappings that we deal with and see every day. Living up to our spiritual potentials mean that we are eagerly seeking a relationship with God through his son, Jesus. We are looking for a closer walk with God's purpose and plan. God says that he has a plan for each of us, which is for us to be in good health and to prosper. He doesn't wish for any pain or suffering in our lives to come upon us. However, though, the Bible does tell us that Satan has a purpose of deception, destruction, and death for all who decide to reject God. It is our, our potential and our spiritual potential involves trusting in God to be who he says he is. God says he is omnipotent, he is omnipresent, and he is omniscient. Therefore, when we trust him and start a journey to living up to our spiritual potential, he will be with us. And his presence is greater than our obstacle, that, than any obstacle that we can face. And the scripture that we can leave with us is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 tells us, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not in your own understanding and in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Thus, our potential is linked to renewing our minds and hearts to the spiritual calling and trust and trusting a comforter to lead us and help us to understand the mind of Christ in our daily walk. You know, that is, it is important for us to understand that our potential in Christ, our potential in who we are as believers, you know, we, we have to find that balance. We have to find that strength. We have to find that joy when we are, are seeking and, and hungering and thirsting for righteousness in, in God, you know, and last few, uh, last few uh, discussions we had, we talked in the book of Romans of how um, there was a preparation to ho holiness. There was a submission to the Holy Spirit. Then there was the, the offering of salvation. And, and, and finally, there was the process of spiritual maturity where each believer, once we accept Christ as their savior, that we begin that process of holiness, that process of maturity. And, and then when we get to that place, Lord, that is, that is a great a, a, a journey that we begin, then we have to start asking God, what is our potential? What, what, is, what is God asking us when, and what does he want for us in our lives? Because it's one thing to, to request a, a, a prayer from the Lord and ask God to help us and keep us and save us and, and protect us from the, the works of Satan. But it's another thing when we are able to grab a hold to the mission, the vision and the purpose that God has for our lives. You know, God tells us in his word that he has a plan for us and he knows the plan for us. So it's up to us to find his plan and find his purpose and find the maximum potential that we can, we can have uh, in our spiritual walk with him. So, you know, if I was going to ask God a specific 
uh, round of questions when I first um, become born again. You know, the, the, some of the things that I would probably ask them is, uh, you know, God, what, what do you want to do in my life? You know, I'm, I'm asking God these questions because I'm looking for a revelatory answer from him. You know, what, what do I, well, God, what, what, do, what do you want to do in my life? You know, and he, he promised us in his word that he was going to give us power. And those, there are, there are power principles that we have, that we can tap into. The one power, if there's a, a, a power of, a promise of power, you know, and John the 14th chapter in the 17th verse, it says the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he dwells in you and with you and will be with you. So there's a promise of power there because he's saying that the world might not see it and, and, and they might not understand it. But the spirit of truth, now that's a, that's a powerful thing when we know that power dwells within us and power is coming of us. And the spirit of truth is the truth of the Holy Spirit that's, that is walking and living and breathing in us. You know, and then there's the person of power. You know, in 1 Corinthians 2, chapter 10th and 11th verse, you know, the person of power and we're talking about the Holy Spirit being and dwell within us. These are the promise of power because he told us in um, Matthew, in Acts 1 and 8, he says, but ye shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and in the it, and to the ends of the earth. So he promised us power. And he said, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon us and we shall be his witnesses. So that promise, he said, you shall receive, meaning don't worry, I'm going to send this to you. I'm going to send a comforter. I'm going to send a helper to you. You will not be alone. You will not be uh, a, a alone in your walk and your spiritual walk. So you got to understand when, when God is, is when, when Christ, when Jesus is, is providing us with that. Now he's given us a, a extra boost, a spiritual boost, a spiritual connection, a spiritual relationship, uh, a spiritual conduit into our spiritual potential. But we, we have to understand, we have to be in a relationship, number one, with Jesus Christ. Number two, he that to confess and believe that he's our savior. Number three, believe that he's the son of God. Number four, believe that God is creator. You know, in order to tap into the spiritual uh, potential that God has, the God the creator has. Now, we know that there are other uh, influences or other, other things that's going on out there in the world that, that we call as believers in Christ, we call them uh, demonic influence or, or uh, other entity influences that are in control of other people, minds, thoughts, and, and body. But we like to believe that the spiritual nature that we dwell in, the spiritual calling that we call upon is the Holy Spirit that is of God, the creator. So his promise was the promise of power. And then the person of power, which is the Holy Spirit, is, is he, has a, he has a mind, he has a will, he has emotions, and the Holy Spirit prays. So when the Holy Spirit dwells within us, all of these spirits and these minds and, and, and these characteristics of the Holy Spirit begins to indwell in us. And the Bible tells us, let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. And we know that from scripture, the Holy Spirit fell as a dove onto Jesus uh, after his baptism. So you see the connection that there's a Holy Spirit that's dwelling and indwelling in everything that believers in God um, does. And that's the potential that he wants us to understand, that we have to have that 
will, that mind, and that emotion, and that prayer. You know, we read last month in Romans 8, 26, and 27, how the Holy Spirit prayer prays for us as intercession. He makes intercession for, for the believers. And that's what we want. When we're living up to our potential, we have to build a prayer life. We have to build that relationship. We have to allow the Holy Spirit to dwell within us so that our daily walk will continue to expand the potential that God has for us. You know, and God, we, we know that um, our potential really, really relies on us trusting that God is who he said he is. Now, a lot of people, like when you go to your jobs or you go on a sports team, I'll take that as an analogy. How sports teams, when you go to try out, if anybody ever tried out for a baseball team or a basketball team or a football team, you know, all of you all stand up and they have tryouts. And when you have the tryouts, you know, everybody that wants to join the team, they have to show the potential that they have to make to make the team better. They have to show the potential skills and talents that they have that can be an attribute to the, uh, the rest of the team. So you put your helmet on, you put your shorts on, you get your favorite club, you put all those things on and you prepare yourself for the tryout. Now, what the, the tryout shows, the coaches, they're showing you're showing the coaches the potential you have to make that team better. And see, when you go up there and you, you, in your natural self, you're saying, okay, I could catch the ball. I could dump, I could shoot threes. I could hit the ball. I could run a four, two 40. I got all these natural potentials. I have all these natural attributes that God has given me and I'm going to make this team. And you go out there and you give your, give it 100% and your tryout. And see, when you're going through that, the coaches are looking at you. The coaches are wagering. The coaches are judging. The coaches are analyzing and evaluating the potential that you have. Just like on your job, when you're applying for that next step, that next level position, you know, a, a lot of times that supervisor will start giving you these little menial tasks or start overloading you with different assignments and works and start leaving you in charge of different things and telling you, you are the lead on this, you are the lead on that. And you might think it's a lot of uh, uh, extra work and everything, but it's, the, it's them showing that they're, they're testing and evaluating your potential to be elevated to that next to that next position or elevated to that next step. So you see everything in life basically has an evaluation of your potential. But tonight we're talking about our spiritual potential, you know, and going back to the baseball and the football and, and uh, the um, mm -hmm. other analogy of tryouts. So Everybody, the coaches, they're sitting there and they have their ink pens, their papers out, and they're evaluating how fast you can run, how far you can jump, or how high you can fly. And they evaluate all those things. And then they look over and say, well, you know, he's good in this area, but he's not good in that area. He can do this, but he can't do that. But, oh, we need him over here, and we need him over there. Uh, let's bring him on the team. So they they call your number and you're now assigned to the team and you ask them, well, what position am I playing? And they say, well, based on your potential and what we see you can, you can do, you can do. Now that's, that's important what you can do. We're going to bring you on a team because we believe that your skills and everything that you can do is going to help the team win. And that's what we want. And that's what God desires for us as as leaders, as believers in Christ. He wants to bring us on the team so that we can win. And we're not talking about winning a game or anything like that. We're talking about, you, you know, the battle, the, the battle that we're going through, because the battle that we're, we're going through and facing isn't, isn't physical. It's a spiritual battle that we go through daily for the souls and for the hearts and for the minds 
of the of his created people, of his created beings. And we have to know that. We have to understand that that what our potential are spiritually is linked to going into the world and uh, exhibiting and and proclaiming Christ to all the world that are are hurting and those that are lost and those that are are in need of any type of help spiritually. And the key, the potential, the, the definition of potential is having or showing the capacity to become or develop into something in the future. And another, this, uh, another one is latent qualities or abilities that may be developed and led to future success or usefulness. See, we have to be useful to Christ. We have to be useful in the body, you know, and God died for, Jesus died for our sins and, and God foreknew us before the beginning of the world. So, you know, those things are covered. <laughs> you know, those things are, are etched. Those things are, are in granite. It's already ingrained in the fabric of humanity. So right now, you know, our acceptance of him as our personal savior, our belief in our indwelling, of he, we shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon us and uh, we shall be witnesses. See, that's what our, our potential should start growing, growing as witnesses, being witnesses to first to God. First, we have to witness and say, hey, you know, I want to share the good news with you. The good news is, you know, Jesus died for your sins, brother. Jesus died for your sins, sister. You know, it ain't about what we do in the church that makes uh Christianity or my faith strong. It's about my prayer life. It's about my personal relationship, knowing that Jesus saved me when I couldn't save myself. It's about the Holy Spirit discerning things to me, providing me with the gifts of the Spirit to be able to walk in the authority of God on earth while we're here. And, and the authority of God on earth is not to be consider a God or God like it's the authority of understanding that we could pray for someone we can speak into a person's life as believers and the Holy Spirit will conform it bring it to pass it will will, will bring peace into their lives in the times of trouble you know that's the potential that we should get to you know the apostles and the book of Acts the Holy Spirit fell down upon them and they received the rushing of the mighty wind and the Holy Spirit and dwell within them and, and, and they went out into the world and they started performing miracles and they started proclaiming and healing people and they started doing all of the things that the Great Commission and the Great Commandment had bestowed, had bestowed upon them. And that holds true with us today. We might not be uh, original apostle and we may not have walked with Jesus Christ in the flesh, but we still have a spiritual relationship because once the indwelling of the Holy Spirit comes upon us, then we need to start seeking, seeking our potential in him. Like I said earlier, we need to ask the questions, you know, God, what do you, what do you want to do in my life? What do you want to do through my life? You know, what do you still desire for me to experience? Now, sometimes God wants us to experience different things in our lives to bring us closer. You know, we might think it might be a little, uh, a little bad that we might go through th certain situations or we might encounter trials and tests, but, you know, those experiences of, of our trials and tests, it increases our faith. We would never know how God can bless us if we don't need a blessing. We would never understand and know that God is, is a healer if we don't need a healing. So when we come to those the experiences, like one time when I was um when I was sick, and I I, I could recall when I was sick in the hospital, I think I was like 14 or 15 years old. And I was laid in the hospital. I had been in the hospital about a month and a half. 
And a year prior to that, I had appendicitis surgery and some kind of way the ligaments or the, the things that were supposed to be clamped out doing that appendicitis sur surgery, they didn't get it all. So some of the, the tendons or the ligaments that were left in there, they wrapped around my intestines. And as they wrapped around my intestine, it created a bowel obstruction. And during that time, uh, I was going to church. I was serving God. I was doing everything that I believed that I should do at 14, 15 years old. I mean, how much trouble can a person 14 or 15 get into, into especially in the 70s, right? In the 70s, we, we were scared of going out, go outside. <laughs> but anyway, um, I got sick and I got really low sick until the point of death. And I was in the hospital and the doctors, they came to talk talk with me and, and they talked with my mother and the, my health started to slowly deteriorate more and more and more and more until the doctor came in one day and he was like, we don't know what's wrong with you. We just gonna, we're gonna have to go in there and do exploratory surgery to see if we could save you. <laughs> and I'm 14 to 15 years old. I'm like, I got the rest of my life. And Lord, I, I went to church. I, I went whenever my mama took me and, and I started reading you the Bible. And, you know, is this going to be my end, God? You know, and those are the words that I was asking, you know. And so I didn't understand why I was in that situation at so young. But it was in that experience that when I got almost to that point where they had to do surgery and I couldn't couldn't hold food down and I had lost about 40 pounds just laying there. You know, I remember distinctly, I was laying on the bed and in the hospital bed and I prayed and I said, God, if you want me to experience this and if you want me to go through this, then let your will be done. And whatever happens, just know that I love you. And I told God that at 15 years old, 14 years old, and they carted me off to the, the surgery room and the people of the church, church members, they were outside, lined up outside the hospital ward and they were crying. My mother, she was crying and everybody was crying. Even the pastor was crying. He didn't even know what to do. He, I guess he, all his prayers, <laughs> you know, he prayed the prayers and they, that was that. And, but it was between me and God at that point. You know, and when it was between me and God, I found that place where I had to find my faith potential, you know, because I believed that God was going to bring me through it. And I trusted and believed. And God did that. He brought me out of it at uh, 15 years old. And I'm sitting here at 56 now. So God is a miracle worker and God lets our experiences expand our faith and that our experiences learn to trust him. Had I not went through that situation, I would, may not have known and understood the fullness of how good and how great God is. Because we might think, well, it was the skills of the doctor. It was the, the technology of the hospital. But you got to look at that's 1978. So it, I don't think there was that much technology going on back then. But I look at how God moved and inter intertwined all those situations to bring me to where I am now. And from that experience, I've learned to trust in God with everything now. I've learned to trust through the good and bad. Because uh, my life after that wasn't all that great after that. But as still and all, you know, I've always learned to trust that God was with me. And that's the point that I want to, to, leave, to, to leave with you all. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you're facing, you know, what do you still desire for me to experience God. When you ask God those questions, he's, he's allowing things to happen and to come in your life to build your experience of faith. How much are you willing to trust them? Job said, though you slay me, yet will I trust. So it's up to us to get to that place too, to where we trust God with our lives. We trust God with our livelihood. We trust God that God will open a door when doors don't seem to be open. Another example is 
when the pandemic hit, you know, everybody was going and, and they were buying toilet paper and they were buying um, food and everything and they were selling out tremendously, you know, and they went and they was in panic. They was in panic mode because the, the situation got real and things was happening that nobody on this earth in our lifetime experienced. But let's look at how God had prevailed. God had kept uh, so many other lives. Unfortunately, God, you know, God allowed death to happen to some, but for some of the others that are still alive here today, that experience will resonate with us for the rest of our lives. How that, how God kept us, how we were spared, how we were um, provided for during the pandemic, you know, and when we look back on this 5, 10, 15 years from now, we're going to see the workmanship and the, the footprint of God in our lives, and we're going to be able to talk about how we believe to receive the goodness of God, and, you know, that's what, you um, the scripture in the Psalms 20, that's what Psalms 27, and find that scripture. Well, it's, Psalm 27 says, I would have fainted lest I have seen the goodness of God in the land of the living. So, you know, we could faint, we could go, uh, and we could fall prey to indecisiveness, low self-esteem, if our faith uh, it doesn't grow and the potential of us understanding that God is with us doesn't grow along with us, you know? And also we would ask God, what possibilities are within me and what potential lies within me? You know, God, God, he, he chose, he, he, birthed us. When we were born, we were born with uh, gifts, talents, attributes that he had already instilled inside of us. What happens is when we are born and we're shaped in iniquity, those gifts and talents and all of those things that God had originally put in, inside of us, you know, they are, are easily persuaded or easily laid over to the demonic influences because the connection of God when we are first born on this earth is, is disconnected. So we have to find God. We have to find and reconnect ourselves and reconcile ourselves back to that holy place where God have, have uh, desired for us to be, have created us to be. And if we go to first, we go to uh, first Peter second chapter, nine and a 10th verse. P Peter was talking to a certain group of people, but I believe this is resonant for, um, for everybody today, if we put it in the context of who we are and the context of who, who Peter was talking to. He says, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession that you make Proclaim the excellence of him who called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. See, now we are chosen people. All believers in Christ and believers, we have been chosen. We are taken out of darkness into the mar marvelous light. So that's who we are. The possibility that lies within us is endless. It is endless because we already proclaimed that God is omnipotent and omnipresent. That means God can do all things but fail. And once we believe in him, believe that, and we accept the Holy Spirit into our lives to, to comfort us, to lead us, to, to, to give us uh, discernment and peace, then we could become that royal priesthood and that holy nation, that people, you know, that uh, proclaim the excellence of God. And we have to proclaim the excellence of God if we are believers. And, and 
that is important for our growth, our spiritual growth, because how can we serve a God that we don't know? How can we serve a God that we don't believe can do all things? You know, the Bible tells us that we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. Well, we got to start living up to that potential uh, faith walk, that trust walk. We have to start believing that if, if, if the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me, then we have to believe it. And that's how we elevate our potential. See, we, we got to go back to uh, the definition of potential. Potential is having or showing the capacity to become or develop into something in the future. So how can we have a future believing that we are believers when we, don't, we, we can't grab to the concept of I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me? You know, how can we grab to the, the thought processes that we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus and that, you know, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe shall not perish but have everlasting life. Man, that's, that's a wonderful thing. And when living up to our potential means that we, we, should, have, we should have scriptures that shows and reveals that God is our strength in a time of trouble. We should be able to go to the word of God and find our potential, find our strength, find our faith, and that will help us to continue to grow. You know, right here on 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, 8 through the church, 8 to the 10th uh, verse, it says, uh, we are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always caring about in the body, the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our bodies. So see, in a time of trouble, we should be able to fall on these words. We should be, I'm not going to say uh, we lay back on these scriptures. I'm saying fall on them. I mean, fall into it because we need something that's going to hold us up. And if we falling into the scriptures and falling into the word, that's what's going to hold us up. And that's going to also strengthen who we are in Christ. And we're going to start growing in our potential. You see, the, the whole thing about we're talking about the future here. We're talking about development in the future. We're not talking about development in the here and now. The potential is what God is looking to develop in us. Because when he gave the Great Commission, the first word that came out of, out of his mouth was go. Go is an action word that's, that means move forward. Go is a word that means that we have to not be stagnant. Go means that we have to continue to grow in where we are, who we are, in our faith. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we have to know that God is with us, you know, and there's a scripture for that too. See, I'm, I'm giving scriptures because it's, it, it, it's easy for me to relate scriptures to what I'm talking about as a, a strengthening tool, as a, a, a forethought or, or a forethought for future success and future usefulness. Now, we need to know that God is with us. And the scripture in Isaiah 41 and 10, it says, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will keep you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So, Look at how God is, is just telling us. He's given us the mandate. He's given us the reassurances that he can do all things and, and that he is with us. And by him uh, confirming that and affirming that, he sent his son, Christ Jesus, to die for our sins. And then Jesus turned around and said, I would not leave you lonely or alone or comfortless, that he would send you a helper. And that helper is the Holy Spirit, which is going to lead us and guide us into all truth. Now, we have to be truthful to what he's saying in his word by 
that we have to have a clean temple. We have to have uh, a preparation process. We, we have to be prepared to live up to our potential. And living up to our potential means that we have to tear off some of those strongholds. We have to tear off some of those things that, that keep us bound into to, to not living up to our potentials, both spiritually and naturally. You know, the natural potential, you know, one we most of many of us are one paycheck away from poverty and many of us are you know one step away from a write up from getting fired <laughs> many of us are one step away from um not being able to buy, buy food and put in the house you know those are the natural things that that come against us but if we are indwelled and infilled with the holy spirit meaning it's not a spirit that's going to possess you like they show you on TV and your eyes roll back in your head and all that stuff. No, no, this spirit is the Holy Spirit and this spirit gives us peace. He comes that we may find peace. We may have peace in tough situations. So when we have that catalyst in our lives, which is Holy Spirit, it allows us to seek the Lord. It allows us, you know, to ask this next question is, what could I become or what shall I become? You know, wow, when you ask God, what, sh what should I become or, or what could I become? God is going to tell you that you are his workmanship. You are, you are uh, fearfully and wonderfully made. You are more than conquerors. That what you are going to, you're going to become a conqueror. And what should you become? You should become a witness, a ambassador, a, a, a example of holiness, an example of faith, an example of joy. You know, that's what God, that's what the intent of Christianity and our faith is about. As believers in Christ, we're supposed to be lights of the world. That's the potential that we should be. We're supposed to be city, city that sits on a hill that can't be hid. We're supposed to be, um, endowed and in, in dwelled and infilled with spiritual gifts that heal, that delivers, that sets free, that edifies. We're supposed to be able to talk and teach the word of God to people that have never heard it before or teach it and, and talk about it in a way that they get the message of salvation. Because see, it's not about the who. It's not about the hollering and screaming. It's not about the foaming at the mouth. It's not about the tearing the pure pits up. It's all about the word of God. When we are able to give the word of God to another person in a manner and in a way that it touches their heart and they reach their soul and their spirit, then we are doing our job. We're living up to our potential. Whenever we come into a room and we're talking to people, our spirit, which is our Holy Spirit, which is our spiritual potential, should resonate out in that room to where people see you and say, man, I think I'm feeling, I'm not feeling good. I had a bad day today. I think I'm gonna go talk to so-and-so such and such and ask them to pray with me or would they pray for me? Or they see that, that um, embodiment of Christ in your life and they see that spirit resonated in you, you know, you'd be surprised at how many of us on this call may have had experiences where people, you could just be standing in one spot and then people just start talking to you. I mean, they start pouring out their heart to you. You know, that's your spirit. That's the potential of what you can become when your talent your gravitational talent for others to come to you and, and spill their, their, their hearts out to you and talk to you about their problems. You know, if you turn that, that, that uh, characteristic or that attribute or that talent around and use it for God, you know, think of how much more greater you will reach people when you understand that the word of God heals, delivers, and set free. So when that person comes to you and you have the power of God and the Holy Spirit rest rooted and abide in you, and they come to you, you could tell them, don't worry about it, babe, it's going to be all right. And you talk to them in love, and then you show them love, and then you embrace them in love, and then you pray with them. And then they, they say, man, I really needed that prayer. I really needed you to talk to me about this, Lord. I really needed your understanding. And they begin to see the love of Christ, the agape love that, 
that we're supposed to potentially live up to. And when we have those things, man, I mean, I tell you, you know, it, it's no good thing with God withhold from us, you know, and, and sometimes we, like I said, we go back to what do you still desire for me to experience? See, sometimes God allow us to experience certain things and we go through certain things as a experience and experience and experience over and over again, because maybe we haven't fully passed that test that God wants to elevate us to that next level. So we can't do the same thing and get the same results. We have to change it up a little bit. You should ask God, if I'm still in this trial and this tribulation, what is it that I'm not doing to be elevated closer to the potential that you have for me, God? You know, and then that's the question you should ask. And then God and the Holy Spirit will send information to you to show you where it is that you need to correct or change or what is it that you need to do. You might need to have a fast, put on a fast for discernment. You may need to study more in the scriptures, in the Bible about uh who God is and, and allow the Holy Spirit to lead you to those scriptures to where it helps you to find that resolution, that question, the answer to your questions. And also it might just send someone in your path that you would be able to sit down and talk with and they would be able to, to minister to you, to become that servant leader to you, to tell you, well, this is what's, what the Lord says. This is what God says. Because we, we, we have to kind of restrain from, I'm going to say restrain from it in a, in a good way. Uh, we have to kind of restrain from thinking that one person got one gift, another person got another gift, another person got another gift, and you got all these three different, 15 different people got to come to you with their different gifts. You know, when we are saved, when we are we, we are walking in the potential that God has, has given us and have shown us. God will allow the Holy Spirit to give us each one of those spiritual gifts in our, in our time of need. Let's say if someone comes to you and, and they are troubled about something, you know, and they don't know how to get through a certain situation, you know, the Holy Spirit will speak through you to impart into that person's life to what to do. And again, when you meet someone that may be not feeling too well, maybe sick or, or anything, or going through something physically in their body, he would, he would touch your heart to say, can I pray for you? And then when you pray for that person, that person actually legitimately feels something and feels change. You know, that's another gift that God has in your potential. That means what you are to become, you, you know, and man, when you really get in that place, in that secret place with God to where the Holy Spirit is 100%, you rely on, you are 100% relying upon the Holy Spirit to move and have his being in your life. Man, all of those gifts and fruits of the Spirit, all those things are working on full cylinders in your life. And people are coming to you. People are asking for prayer. People are pouring their hearts and their minds out to you. And then the Holy Spirit gives you that discernment and he gives you that wisdom to be able to reach out and help them. Man, think about the potential that you're growing up into, <laughs> living up to your spiritual potential. That means you reaching people in your circle, out of your circle. We talked last week about the concentric circle, in your concentric circle, outside of your concentric circle, in the world, you being able to touch lives with the spoken word, touch lives with a prayer, touch lives with a word of encouragement. You can even touch a life with a smile. You know how many times that that uh, I've walked into a, a different rooms or something than when I was at work, and you know sometimes when you're at work people don't speak and they 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 give you that fake smile. You know how that half smile, like the Joker smile, and they give you that, and then they think that 
that's saying, hi, how you doing? That's not really, hi, how you doing? That's just, well, I'm just going to show you that I, I see you <laughs> and I'm going to half smile. But when you are really legitimately, truthfully smiling to somebody, you say, hey, how you doing? Good morning. How are you? Or, you know, you don't have to say God bless you because they have a lot of politically correct things going on in, in the world now. But you can say, hey, how you doing? Good morning. And you can mean it and have a meaning, a meaningful expression in your face. You'll be surprised at how many people would look at that and that'll stick with them that whole day. They still have that vision of your pretty smile or that 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 really happy and joyful smile. They have that vision with them every day. And trust me, when they see you that next day and you smile again that day, they're going to light up and say hi back to you. You're going to be like, good morning. How are you? They're going to say, hey, how you doing? Like they know you, like they've been knowing you for a long time. But see, that's the potential. See, we got to have that potential to bring light in, in the dark places. It, and nowadays with everything that's going on and, you know, so many things that that are demonically influenced that's just running rampant in this earth. You know, we need we need a, 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 a salvatory uh, expression of love that's that resonate through us as believers. We have to show people in this world that we're not the judgmental type of people that they believe or or have unfortunately uh, been involved with, that we are lights of the world, that we are people that have joy. And, and you know, um, we have to just understand it, you know, and here's one right here, the Psalms 24, that talks about um, our proclamation that we should live by. You see, I'm giving you these scriptures because I, I want you to be able to understand that in the Bible, it's not about doom and gloom and what people say, baby killing and worships and all of this stuff. I'm talking about incentive things and, and things that you can go to the Bible and you can find joy and peace and you can find examples of God's love. Now, look at this. It, Psalms 24 says, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Wow, isn't that something? <laughs> wow, the earth is the Lord and the fullness therein and a joy. And it says, lift up your head, O ye gates, and even lift them up the everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts, he is the king of glory. Wow, man, oof. And then here's another scripture in Ephesians 3, 20 and 21. It says, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works in us. To him be the glory in the church of Christ Jesus to our generations forever and ever. Amen. Wow. These are all uplifting, the things that we could do exceedingly and abundantly, all things that we may ask or think. And then the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. See, he's not talking about, oh, I'm going to destroy you and I'm going to do this and that and the other and I'm going to that and the, this and that what people try to proclaim God to be an angry God. God is a loving God and he wouldn't love us. He loved us so much to the point where he sent his son as a living sacrifice. And when we believe that, then the next step is to receive his gift, which is the gift, the promise of the Holy Spirit to be a witness. We read that in Acts 1 and 8. It says, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You shall be witnesses. So, I mean, Wow. I mean, to really think about that. Think about where you can become in your potential with Christ. I mean, it's not about the here and now, although it is, but we have to have a, a process to spiritual maturity. We have to develop a process to sanctification and holiness. And we talked about that, how those processes and, and, and those uh, steps to spiritual maturity, it involves our walk of faith. It involves us trusting. And the word of God, it involves us believing that 
God is who he is. <laughs> and that's all that sums, it sums that up. And, you know, today, if, if you're someone out there that don't know that, that Jesus is the son of God and you don't believe, you know, I'm offering you an opportunity now to get to know him, get to know him as your personal savior. If you want to live up to your spiritual potential, now is the time to get that way. Now is the time to believe that your spiritual potential is greater than where you are right now. You might be able to do some things. You might be able to pray a certain way, but think of how much greater you can become and how much greater you can be when you have fully submitted and committed your life to Christ. Think about the times when you were at your last, when the devil had infused self-doubt, have had infused um, low self-esteem in your life, and and the premeditated lies that Satan had told you about, you're not going to do this and you can't do that. You know, the devil, he, he tricky looks so certain person because he comes and he starts to infuse doubt and mistrust in everything and anything that we try to do. You know, we believe that we're going to go to church um, Sunday and Saturday night or Sunday, early Sunday morning. You don't feel too good. You might well stay in the church, stay in the house. You ain't got to go to church today or you're going to want to read the Bible. You say, well, I'm kind of tired. I've been reading all day. I don't feel like reading the Bible all day. Or you need to pray for someone. Well, I've been talking on the phone all day. I don't need to be, I don't want to talk. <laughs> That's just too much to be praying for somebody. See, the devil will start telling you these things and start infusing your mind and your heart against the potential that you're supposed to be uh, gravitating toward. So as believers and as those that uh, desire to find their potential in Christ. I offer you this, this opportunity to, to just understand and get to know who Jesus is. I mean, you know, it's all in the scriptures. It's all in the Bible. And the Bible is not a Bible book that man made and all of that stuff. Look at the core essence of what everything in the Bible talks about. It talks about love. It talks about grace. It talks about um, redemption. It talks about being uh, rescued. It talks about eternity with God. I mean, who, <laughs> and that's eternity after death. That means a, a, a life after death. Wow, that's something that we could really live up to our potential to do. And, and it's not hard. All, that, all God is asking you to do is to love him, believe his son died, accept the Holy Spirit into your life, and help others. Those are the four main things. <laughs> and those are the four main things that, that, that we can take with us and we could grow in. And those are simple. I mean, you don't have to kill a cow. You don't have to go and, and do other stuff. You don't have to, you know, spin around three times with a bottle. You don't have to do any of that. All those things are things that, are, that you are capable of doing within yourself. <laughs> you know, believe, accept, um, move forward and your potential and share it with others. That's all he wants. You know, and our attributes and our abilities and our attitudes are important. We have to have the attributes, you know, the character traits that we need to move forward, you know, that people can see the real you and, and, and understand who you are. And then your abilities, are, you know, the, 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 how you, practice and exercise things and how you pursue things, your ability to, to finish things that you start. And then the attitude, meaning that you have to have a good attitude where it draws people. You know, you can't have a, a messy attitude and, and think that people are going to want to listen to the message of salvation or listen to anything you got to say for that reason. So when I say we have to put that smile on, that's important. When we say that we have to show the love of Christ, that's important. When we say, when I say that we have to, you know, be willing to care for others other than ourselves, that's important. See, because all of those things bring us joy. And then the joy of the Lord is our strength. So it all comes back. It all falls back. Everything we do should always fall back to God. God is the center 
of our circle. And everything we do should fall back to God and give God glory. So I just want to encourage you all tonight. And I thank you all for a wonderful time. And I'm going to open up if anyone has anything to say. You know, I'm going to yield the floor and before we move forward for our prayer dismissal. Amen. We're going to continue forward. And like I said, I thank you all. And, you know, and, and my final thoughts, the spiritual potential begins with our redemption. We must give our lives to God as a living sacrifice and begin the process of holiness that will strip us of the past desires and whims that only gravitate to what our natural desires and thoughts give us. We must be born again of the spirit in order for our spiritual potential to be realized. It is easy to live a life of tradition and ritual because our natural body and intellect can understand it. We are shaped in the influences of Satan and therefore our spiritual and emotions are shaped to understand on natural things. But we are transformed and renewed in Christ to seek kingdom of heaven first. Then we become committed to seeking and hungering to please God. This means that our potential on this earth rests and abides in the will and purpose of God. No one can take that away from us because we are connected through a personal relationship with him. The Holy Spirit, his spirit leads us and instructs us to live as we are called and grow our potential as believers. And that concludes tonight. And again, I thank you all for everything. I thank you all for joining with us. And if anyone has anything to say before we leave, Amen. So we're going to close with the word of prayer. Father God in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for another day. We thank you, Lord, that you have been so good to us. We thank you that you have restored the joy unto us today, on this day. Lord, we know that there were so many things that have come against us in this hour, in this minute, in this second, in this week, but we know that we are more than conquerors. Based on your word, we want to live up to our potential in you. We want to live up to our potential as believers on this earth. We want to live up to our potential as men and women of God and men and women of faith. We ask you, Heavenly Father, to continue to restore the joy unto us, Lord, that you would have us to have. Lord, we know that that it is the devil's will to steal, kill, and destroy. But Lord, we know that you come that we may have life and that more abundantly. Now, Lord, we ask you, Lord, each home, each person represented today on this call, that you bless their homes, that you, you reach the, into their lives and you pour them out a blessing, Lord, that they who have no room to receive. Lord, we thank you for all things. We thank you for sickness. We thank you for healness, healing. We thank you for all the things that you have given us in this earth. Because we know that you have all power in your hand. And each thing that we experience, Lord, we're going to give you glory through it. No matter what we may be going through, we're going to still say God is good. We're going to still say the Lord is real. We're going to still say, bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and all that is within me. We bless your holy name. Now, Lord, as we end this call, Lord, we ask you the blessings, the prosperity, the peace, the joy that you see fit for the, us to have in our lives. Let your will be done. Those that are bereaving, those that are going through grief, those that are going through a struggle, be with them, Lord, and give them peace and comfort. Lord, we ask you, Heavenly Father, to heal the bodies, heal the minds, heal the hearts, each person that are on the call, that, that will hear this call, Lord, we ask you to touch their lives, heal them of whatever sicknesses that they may have, and Lord, restore the joy unto them. 
that you have them. Lord, we ask you to reveal yourself in their lives, those that are yes. that are still backwards in their, their ways of, of depravity. Lord, we ask you to bring them into the fold. We ask you to, to send your, your Holy Spirit to teach them to bring them, to witness to them, Lord. Let this not be in vain. Nothing that's been said tonight, we ask you, Lord, this, this, to continue to grow us, to continue to live on us, to continue to make us examples of your will. Let the word of God reveal love, joy, and peace in our lives so that others might be saved. These and all the blessings we ask in your name, Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I thank you all for joining. I thank you. Uh, God bless you, Toya, for joining. We love you. Marcel, we love you. All the others on the call, we thank you. We give you all. We just thank you all for joining in. And let every, the words that were spoken today, we pray that it touch your heart. And we are available by call or text or email. Um, please feel free to contact and reach out to us. We love you all and have a good night. Good night. You too. Thank you. Amen. Good night. Good night. Good night.